this is Virtuals the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. I'm going to show you today another game of the Ponziani Steinitz Gambit, particularly what to do when the opponent castles their king on move 6. Now recently I had a quick wins video where my subscriber played this line, and this is to show you that it still works really well at the intermediate level. So I've got the black pieces, my opponent is almost in the 1300s, and they lead with the Italian. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. The Italian game, I now play the other knight, two knights defense. And not uncommonly, this will provoke uh, the player with the white pieces to go on an aggressive knight attack which is the beginning of the fried liver attack. Uh, and those of you who are sort of intermediate will have seen this plenty of times. Basically, white is trying to double team on the f7 pawn. Now, I now generally always play the Ponziani Steinitz Gambit. Knight touches a pawn on number four. Stockfish will call this a mistake. Not quite fair, you know, once upon a time it was uh, known as a book move. And if you look at the game, you will see that I actually did really well in this game. Pretty much all moves are either brilliant moves, best moves, uh, or excellent moves, uh, or book moves, with the one mistake being the beginning of this gambit. Now, the thing with this gambit is that if white persists with the knight attack, you know, that's a mistake. That's a straight-up mistake. White has to change gears and take with the bishop. Not uncommonly, in fact, it's the most common move. White will continue with the knight attack. That's a mistake. And it goes from about plus 2.5, so it is a mistake, you know, technically, to minus 0 0.4. So black is now ahead. Uh, you know the drill. Queen to h4. And now we have a mate in one threat. Now, in this position, the very interesting thing is when we look at the Lee Chess Community database of lower-rated games of Let's Rapid, 92% of the time, 92, 92% of the time, white will play a move that is mistake. So the most common moves is about half the time, particularly once you get into intermediate level, white will castle, and that's what my opponent did in this game, and we'll look at what to do. Or they'll bring the queen to f3, or they'll play uh, g3. Now the best move in this position, just to show you, is actually queen to e2. That occurs 4% of the time. Really, really, you know, not obvious. And basically the idea here is white wants to trade off the queens, and that blunts our attack. So we will now attack the queen with the knight, but then white can now attack the uh, our, our queen. And what we will do is captures, captures, we jump back, they take our rook, and now we take that pawn with a check. Uh, and basically, you know, this is what happens, and basically chess continues from this incredible position. White and black are pretty equal. Black still has a slight advantage, but this almost never happens. Now, most commonly, as I said, um, white may play queen to f3. Devastating position. Look at that. Look at that eval. In fact, this is about minus 10, minus 11, because after knight to this position, white has some trouble. Uh, pretty much they're they're stuffed. They're, they're completely losing, they're about to lose massive material. If they have a play g3, attacking the queen, what we do in this position, you can see black is still way ahead, captures, force a capture, and now check. And basically, if they will want to block, then bang, you know, it's, it's disastrous. It's completely disastrous for white, and we win massive material again. Now, in this game, white played uh, move six, short castles. And this is the most common move, and it's not entirely obvious if you've not studied this position how you should play with black. So at lower, so, um, so beginner levels, very often people will try to play bishop to add a third attacker to that f2 pawn. However, that's a little bit slow. What you should do is to immediately take 
with the knight. And that's what I knew uh, to do. And surprisingly here, white should not capture back with the uh, with the rook, even though the queen is under attack. Remember what I said? What white actually needs to do is to try to trade queens. White's best move actually is to counterattack the queen. We capture, they capture, chess continues, but we continue playing with a very nice advantage of about, um, about uh, I think, minus two, between minus two and minus three. So black is still definitely ahead in this position. However, almost all the time, I think 90% of the time, white will take, and the problem is we now bring out the bishop, which now is... Uh, is a pin, and they, that doesn't work anymore in terms of trading bishops because we can capture that with check. Uh, they push their pawn forward, that is surprisingly the best move for white to open up some of their positions, but we can just take. They now move the king out of the way, I capture that with queen, and, and look at this amazing position here. This queen is now stuck. They can't bring that queen into play because any of these moves by my queen is mate. So obviously it's got a battery, but if nobody's defending the back rank, these two moves are also mate. So this queen at the moment is forced to do guard duty. So they can take, that's fine. I'm not worried about that at all. The next move for us, and this is a thematic move actually in the uh, Ponziani Steinitz Gambit, it works here, is d5 disconnecting that bishop and also bringing our bishop into the mix. Because think about it, this queen cannot move from that position. It cannot move to any of these squares because any of those is mate. It has to stay here to guard against mate, which means that the queen is rooted to that position. So my tactic now is to bring any other piece to attack the queen from a distance and potentially the queen is lost or I win with mate. So, jump the pawn forward. Excellent move. That deflects the, the bishop. The bishop actually needs to come back to this square, but they don't see that. They capture, and now I've got bishop g4. Brilliant move, because the queen cannot take. If it takes, it's mate. Uh, they find the best response, which is to bring the bishop, but now we trade bishops, uh, and now, Long castles, potentially they'll be a discovered long distance attack on the queen. They try to attack, doesn't work, move the bishop with a discovered attack, and here white miscalculates and make a mistake. They probably thought they could capture the bishop, uh, and because there's no longer a battery, uh, mate isn't possible. But no, we now still have back rank mate in a ladder mate format. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is to try the Ponziani Steinitz Gambit against opponents who attempt the fried liver attack. You will like it. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.